Okay, Porsche catastrophic problems for Porsches of these generations. Fortunately, there's just a couple, and I will list them out now. Item one. This problem pertains specifically, or most predominantly, to the 986 and 996 generation cars. That's the 986 Boxster and the 996 911s, with the exception of the Turbo and GT3. Those have the Metzger engines and they actually have journal bearings instead of um, roller bearings for the, for the intermediate shaft bearing. There is an IMS bearing in every one of these cars. But the, the problem lies mostly with the M96 generation engine, which is the engine that was in the 986 and 986 um, via Porsche vehicles. If the bearing goes, basically what happens is the- The intermediate shaft bearing. Uh, the intermediate shaft, which holds both cam chains, it's, it's a cam chain on um, one on the front of the engine and one on the back. And it's just one, one cam chain for each engine, or each bank of cylinders. Uh, if that bearing goes bad, then the cam chain comes off of the sprocket of the IMS shaft. And as your engine is running, it's an interference engine, meaning the valves can interfere. If the valves are open, then, the, then they can interfere with the pistons as they come to the head of the cylinder. Uh, which is a horrible contraption for if, you know, if your valve train stops while your um, pistons are still moving, then in no time at all, uh, you have interference and your engine is clapped apart. Mixed with the bearing just shattered, so the, there are bits of metal flying throughout your engine now um, and circulating within your oil. It's catastrophic engine failure within seconds. That was a big problem for these years of car. Had a serviceable IMS. It's less reliable. However, there's many aftermarket solutions that have proven to be quite robust. Just because the original bearing on these two cars is less reliable and has been known to fail catastrophically, doesn't mean you shouldn't buy one. Because there are solutions and they can still be reliable cars. <laughs> Not all of them failed. Again, only I think about 8% of them did. Which is still pretty high and discomforting but the key is if you find one of these two generations of cars and it's a low mileage car and it has the original IMS bearing in it be very wary of it because the ones that sit usually have more problems the ones that are driven don't have as many problems um, so and this isn't always true of course I'm sure there's some case out there uh, where a higher mileage car did have this problem, but when they sit, the oil uh, actually seeps into uh, past the the bearing grease seal, and uh, you know there's water in your oil as well, so it causes some corrosion, and basically over time it causes the grease within the sealed bearing to break down, eventually leading to the bearing failure. That would be model year 2006 through 2008 were the, um, both of these, model year 2006 to 2008. So the problem is um, not service or serviceable. <laughs> I can't talk and write. But more reliable. These have been known to, they, they can fail. Uh, they have some like phantom failures. Again, the low mileage rule does apply for the M97 engine. If you find a car with lower miles, I would honestly be a little bit hesitant to buy it. Um, the sweet spot with in today's day and age, these cars are, you know, anywhere from 10 to 12 years old. They, I would say the sweet spot would be between like 35 to 
50,000 miles on the low end. I personally worried about the IMS bearing failure on my 987.1 Cayman S. No, truthfully, I'm not. They, uh, it's a, it's a, it's known to be a robust engine, and um, in the fact that it's not serviceable doesn't really scare me that much. I wouldn't stay away from from either of these engines because it just depends on which route you want to go. You can go the M96 route and have a serviceable bearing, buy the car right away, put a brand new bearing in it, and you know you're okay. Or you can buy an M97 engine and you know that odds are, unless it's a really low mileage car, you're not going to have any issues. You might be wondering what the best practices are for maintaining your IMS bearing. Just a couple things. Most importantly is to drive your car. As I mentioned, the ones that sit do have the most problems. So drive your car, it's super important. It's hard on any car when it sits and Porsches are certainly no exception. The next thing you can do is to change your oil frequently. I'd say every 5,000 miles. The service interval for these cars is 20,000 miles on oil changes, which as I said in the previous videos, is absolutely ridiculous. Do it maybe 5,000 miles or so and it will keep your IMS bearing a lot happier. Finally, when you do your oil changes, be sure to send out an oil sample and have it analyzed. Um, Blackstone Labs is a great company for this. I think it costs like 35 or $40 to have, it, to have an oil sample analyzed and they break it down completely and tell you exactly what the contents of your oil are. So therefore you'd be able to kind of have an early detection or if your IMS bearing was going bad. catastrophic problem that's known for the M96 and M97 engine is cylinder scoring. If you track your car this can lead to oil deprivation in the corners and all the oil sloshes away from your oil pickup. Piston slap, you'll hear people call it that because you can hear the piston moving up and down the cylinder and it sounds like a ticking noise, like tick 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 tick. So, symptom. It's the piston slap sound. Every Porsche, every engine burns some amount of oil. That doesn't mean you have cylinder scoring. Well, in fact, if you look in your owner's manual of these cars, there is a spec for the uh, acceptable amount of oil burning per distance. So, it, one way to, to note any sort of excessive oil burning is you can see excessive carbon buildup on your exhaust tips. How to prevent. Run heavier oil. I personally run 5W50 in my car. If you look in your um, owner's manual, at least for the 987, there are three different oil weight specs. It's um, 0W40 for ex extreme cold climates, 5W40 for kind of mid-range climates, and then 5W50 for hotter climates. So I don't ever plan to drive my car in the winter time, so I run 5W50. So the heavier weight oil is uh, offers better protection I actually used to run 0W40 because that's the convention everyone in the United States seems to run Mobile One 0W40 for their car. I did that for a while and I didn't trust it. I heard a lot of valve noise and ticking and the moment I flipped over to the um, 5W50 weight oil, instant, instant, much smoother running engine, um, much quieter and again, it is acceptable. The problem is it is harder to source that oil, at least in the United States. Another, another remedy, a low temp thermostat. I believe the stock thermostat um, opens at 185 Fahrenheit, again correct me if I'm wrong, and the aftermarket one opens at 161, so you have a 24 degree um, delta there. So you're sending coolant to the radiator to get cooled off that much sooner. Um, and you do have an oil cooler on these engines, which is cooled by the coolant. So if you have 24 degree cooler coolant, therefore you have, you have cooler oil 
and cooler oil does better protection. Deep oil stump, stump and extended baffle. Basically, you can get a kit that it adds another, basically, I think it's about another quart to your already eight quart oil system. So, and, and then it also adds an extended pickup, so you have that much oil that has to slosh before your pickup can be deprived of oil. Also, um, there's, there's, there's aftermarket baffles, um, different style baffles that, that go around your pickup. You have one already on, your, on, on each of these engines, but there's maybe debatably better designs. Um, so pretty much it, it, those are supposed to uh, more effectively prevent sloshing away from your oil pickup. I personally have not gone this route. I've gone these two, I've gone the heavier oil and low temp thermostat. I think that unless you're tracking your car on a regular basis, then there's no need for the deep sump and extended uh, baffle. Um, I think that you can still take some serious corners and super high G-forces um, just running the, these top two items here. The, the baffle I think is a bit of a myth. I think there's some cheap aftermarket designs out there that are, you know, known, you know people kind of talk up but don't actually do that good of a job. I don't want to scare you by saying anything about the IMS problems or the, or the cylinder scoring problems. Um, because they truly are great cars and they're great to own. The main conclusion of this video here is to tell you two main things. The maintenance schedule is is pretty typical to every car. Uh, as, as I mentioned in my previous video, uh, it is a German car and it is a high performance car. So you have to be expecting that you will pay more money for things like your oil, just like normal, normal maintenance costs. Um, it takes more oil, it takes more expensive oil, just little things like that. The coolant is expensive. But the schedule itself isn't more rigorous than any other car. It's pretty typical. Um, so it's very doable. If you have some extra cash and if you have the passion to want to own a car like this, that's, that's key. You must have passion. And then additionally, the wear items are relatively inexpensive and they're pretty easy to DIY. So finally, if you own one of these uh, and you're new to it, or if you're even, or if you're like considering buying one of these and you're kind of on the fence about it, this particular generation, like these particular generations of Porsches are not scary to own as much as everyone on forums will try to scare you out of it. They are not scary to own. <laughs> so by all means, go, um, go buy one if you're on the fence. And uh, I hope you learned something in this video today. Thanks again for tuning in to Fun Ahead TV.